Have you ever wanted to make your own t-shirt dress? Today, I'm going to be taking my knitted sloper and turning it into a t-shirt dress, and I'm super pumped to do this. Hi, I'm Christina, and I love to digitally apparel pattern, creating unique pieces of wearable art. And I am super excited to get patterning this fun t-shirt dress today. So I'm going to bring up my knitted t-shirt sloper that I have here, and we're just going to make some quick alterations. We're going to change a few lengths and then double check some um, sizings and everything to make sure that it fits. So first thing that I'm going to do is I need to make sure that it is long enough. So right now this comes down kind of to my high hip area and I definitely want to go down to about mid thigh. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draft a new line that's 36 inches long. We want to make sure that line is filled in and there. And then the other one, just to give myself kind of a basis of seeing where I want it to go, I'm going to do 22 inches at the same, and then we're going to rotate that out. And if I keep let, if I let it stay at that angle, that's going to finally going to be more of like an A line, uh, all the way out. Whereas if I have it just kind of smidge down, uh, and ease down straight, that'll be more of like the t-shirt. So it just depends on what you want out of that in the end. And I still have to figure out what I want out of that. So the next thing I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to, because I only measured my front, we're going to mimic that to the back because I probably want the back a little bit longer just to cover that booty a little bit. So we have that go through there. That's hit in there. Perfect. So then I'm just going to transform this guy. Can I hold it on that plane? There we go. Just that long. Just because I'll need to add a few inches because I was measuring my front from the nape of the, the uh, center front point of my neck, whereas you'd measure your back up at the nape of your neck up on that bone. And that's going to give you a little bit of difference. So I'm going to do that. And then I can do the same here. We're going to do a 22 inches at 270. And we're going to rotate it out. So it matches that line because I got a little bit of hips. Um, but I don't, yeah, I'm definitely not going to want to have it continue out because I do want it to be more of an actual t-shirt dress where it just kind of hugs the body. It's not super tight fitting, um, but it's not that flared A-line skirt that I have going on right now. Uh, but this is just going to be kind of the baseline. Could give me some markers. So the other thing I definitely want to check is I want to make sure that I got some room around my hips. So right now this is hitting probably about at my high hip area. Let's see here. If we go, I believe my hips and I don't have my measurements right on me and I should have done that. High hip. Hold on a minute while I go grab my measurements. Okay. So my hip, my waist to fullest hip is 10.5. You go straight down. So that is actually hitting a little bit lower than I was expecting that to hit on me. But I do remember I have actually hemmed it on multiple occasions because I have that sloper a little bit long and hitting there. But that's actually good because that will tell me that that, let's double check this measurement. We want to double check all these measurements because we want to make sure that we have enough room around our hips. If you don't have as big of hips or anything, uh, you don't need to worry about it nearly as much. Yeah, that gives me plenty of ease around my hips. 
So you always want to double check that because you, if you just take a t-shirt and especially a women's t-shirt, if you take it straight from where it sometimes ends on you and take it straight down, it'll be a super tight fitting shirt dress, t-shirt dress, which can be exactly what you're looking for if that is what you are looking for. But I know I want just a little bit of wiggle room and a little bit of ease. So I'm going to leave it out just like that. And the other thing that I want to do before I start tracing everything out is I actually want to change it into a V neck dress. So I'm just going to drop this and give myself a little bit of a V neck. And then I'm going to measure what that line is by that. And I'm just going to take that and put it right there. I'm going to rotate that down so that since I am altering the shoulder seam just a little bit, we are going to, eh, I'll drop that just a smidge. So that will be our new neckline. So we're just dropping it in the back a little bit and going to a V front. Yeah, I'm excited for that. I think that's going to turn out really, really cute. So the, the last thing that I want to do is I want to figure out exactly where I want this to hit down here. So we're just going to drop a line and see if I can get that to match up. Should be staying on that. I'm holding shift and you are wanting to move. So I could go a little bit. Yeah. We're going to do the same thing here. Whoops, not that. Click. Because then that will give it just a smidge up on the edges, on the sides. And we can raise that or lower that a little bit, but I think what I would do is I will actually make it like this and then in the final fit, decide if I want to raise that up just a little bit or not. So now that I have the, all the bases, it's kind of laid out, it's the way I want, I actually need to create the pattern on top of this. So I'm just going to add a layer, lock that layer, and then we're going to pen this out. So I'm going to start center front, go down and go up. Let's actually hit that anchor point. And then we're going to give it a little bit of a curve there and there. And I'm going to zoom in just a little bit to hopefully get this hit just right. And closing the pattern. There we go. Time to do the back. Back and down. We're going to definitely go back through and curve some of these guys because they are some very harsh lines that won't quite give us what we want, but we can easily make it what we need it to be. like so. There we go. Then what we're going to want to do is actually, I'm going to add a point right here in the middle. We're going to curve it and we're going to grab these handles and give it a nice curve. You want it to be a nice curve like that so that it is easily transitioning from a little bit longer to a little bit shorter. Now I am also looking for these pink lines, they're guidelines. 
so that you know when you're going to get right at 90 degrees. You want to make sure you're as close to 90 degrees as possible uh, because that will create that smooth transition. Yep, and we're just going to smooth those out. I think we're going to smooth out the other ones going the other way. I might pop that out just to give me a smidge more ease. Boop. Instead of concaving it in. Control Z. Let's actually see if I can move that out. There we go. Instead of so instead of cutting a little bit of the pattern out here, I'm just adding a little bit right to my waist. That's what that's doing like so. And now I can actually go and turn off this other pattern. I don't have my sleeve. I did not transfer my sleeve, but I have my the basis of my shirt dress. I <laughs> I love how fast and easy it is to actually start with a sloper in Adobe Illustrator and already be at almost a finished product at the end. It goes so fast. So what I am going to do is I am going to grab this sleeve and pull it up onto the top layer so that I have it because I do want to do some double checks before I actually finish this. I want to make sure that my side seams are going to match up and then I need to actually label my uh, label all my pattern pieces so that they are good to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to double check my um, the truing of my pattern. So I'm going to cut apart these side seams. That is 29.1 and 29.1. They match up. That makes it perfect. So then the other thing that you'll want to do is you'll want to either note how long of a, how you want to finish the neckline. Are you going to actually um, bind it off? Or are you going to create a facing? Or are you going to do like a double fold and surge it on? I haven't fully decided how I'm going to do that. I might do a facing just so that you guys can see how easy it is to do a facing. So to do that, I'm actually going to quickly, let's see. I actually want A, control, copy, control front. I got it. So then we're going to do, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull that down about an inch, 0.99. And then we're going to lengthen it. Like so. And then we're going to, whoops, I wanna get right on that anchor, connect those dots so that I have a facing. Now, depending on how you actually lay out your pattern, if you're just tracing, you can leave this right there. And then you just know that you'll have to trace that pattern onto your facing piece. Or if you like to cut out your patterns and then add everything, you'll want to have it as a full separate piece. The next thing I am definitely going to do, we're going to make sure that it lines up the wrong way. So then we are going to line that up, rotate it, doot, 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 just like so. And then we're going to, I'm on that layer, so that's going to give me some problems. So we're going to start with a line right up there. We're going to transform him down, negative 0.99. Whoops, not negative, positive. I always love that there is a preview and this little graph right here that helps me make sure I'm putting everything in the right spot. That 
looks like it's longer than an inch. Did I? That is definitely longer than an inch. That is an inch and a half. Easily fixed. We're going to transform that again. There you go. 0.51. There we go. That looks much better. So then we're just going to pen to that corner. Ooh, let's get it right on that corner instead of not on that corner. There we go. Then we want to finish penning around. Just like so. And there we have, there is the other half. I don't know why you keep jumping on me. I must be touching my mouse pad or something. And there we have our other facing. Uh, we can get rid of that. Whoops. And I'm just going to, it's not that one, it's this one. Gonna reline this up so we can make sure we get the grain right. So, pen. I'm gonna do our grain lines next. And I want to make sure I keep these at the same so that they do not bite each other while they are working with each other. And what I'm going to do is just highlight them both, copy them over here, and pop that up there. Now, I don't actually want a seam down the center front. So that's not what I should have done. I'm, I would be okay with having a seam down the center back. Um, we'll just see how it actually lays out on the fabric. I have to find the fabric I want to make for this, but we'll have to see how that actually lays out. So instead of actually having a grain line, I'm going to change this so that it tells people they need to actually cut it on the fold. Now you can either note that uh, with the, your grain line, but this is kind of a standard way for a lot of different places to have it so that you cut it on the fold and there's no seam allowance there. And I definitely would rather have that. So we're gonna do some text. So this is T shirt dress front cut one on on the fold. Clean up those dots. And line that up like so. And then I'm just going to copy this over. Because then it's the back. And apparently I have a random V in there. I must have hit V instead of space. Weird stuff happens. There we go. And there we have it. We also have our sleeve that we need to line up. Ooh, and that got switched. And we're going to, nope, not that, not that. 
Control Z. We're gonna pull that over. Make it a little bit beginnier. Sleeve. And then up to here. The other thing we'll have to fix here, cut two. There we go. Back facing. And we're going to shrink that a little bit more so that it actually fits on there. That is, I just want to move you up. It's also very wide. So I have put up a little bit, I have my patterns actually at a little bit wider of a stroke than I normally pattern with. And that is so that you guys can more easily see what is what I'm doing on the screen. But I normally pattern at a uh, 0.1 zero one five instead of at this, I think I'm at the six right now, which it just makes it really wide. Um, and you know, can cause problems because you want to get your patterns as exact as you possibly can. But there we have it. We now have a t-shirt dress made in just a few short, simple steps, and it's ready to get printed out or projected out onto some fabric and created. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe so that you can see other fun ways on how to digitally apparel pattern. And make sure to grab those key commands and useful charts. If you grab those, that's how I'm moving between tools so fast and everything and how I get patterning faster. So I look forward to seeing you in some of my other videos. Happy patterning!